Hello and welcome to the garden. Well, it is a gorgeous day here, mostly blue skies, and it's actually pretty toasty here. Uh, this garden does tend to get quite warm because the, the hedgerow and the fence it keeps the air fairly still here. And then we've got the, the south facing wall where we've got the two greenhouses and we've got the garage and outbuilding walls here. That, that serves to turn this into a bit of an oven when the sun is out. And well, it's, it's a good environment for the kitchen garden. We have to be a little bit careful what we plant where, and it's, it, it's good to make use of some of the more shady parts of the plot as well. Um, you know, things like lettuce and, and some of the oriental greens that don't like the heat of summer. You can get those in the north facing border where they will be very happy to grow. But yeah, it's, um, it's always interesting how the, the walls and the, the, uh, the enclosures here affect the microclimate because if I walk out of the gate towards the house, the environment's very different. The temperature is, is noticeably cooler out there and, and there's, there's, a bit, there's a little bit more breeze. So that, that's always, it's always interesting. And sometimes we can, uh, as gardeners, if we're smart, we can use some of those features to our advantage. Anyway, I have waffled on about that subject before. So let me not get started down the microclimate route. I've got one simple job today. Um, the only reason I mentioned the weather is because, because it's nice and warm, I'm going to get my courgette plants in the ground today. Now I put these in reasonable sized pots, but they've been in them for quite a while. So I wouldn't be surprised if they are bursting to get out. Now, I always do like to grow my summer squash and, and winter squash plants on to a good size before planting them out. And that is definitely a good size. Um, it's ridiculous. I mean, this could have gone out earlier. I didn't get around to it. And I don't like to put them out too early because they will really appreciate, they will really appreciate the warmer conditions. But you can see I've got, I've got fruit on here. Um, it won't be long, maybe only a couple of days before I can pick a couple of courgettes from these already. So I need to get those in the ground. I've got four plants. I will be regretting that in uh, two months time. There'll be more courgettes than I know what to do with, but to start with, that's very nice. I think two would be, two would be plenty. Um, so this bed has not been improved recently. So what I'm gonna do is get a bucket of horse compost, more or less, uh, in each of the planting areas, maybe a sprinkle of fish blood and bone, but at least a bucket of horse compost. And I'll just work that in just locally into the, the soil there. And I'll, I will plant these on a little bit of a mound. I very often like to do that with the squash. Um, lots of the squash, so, so the winter squash in particular with the, 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 uh, the vining sorts, the trailing sorts, they, they can root from the stem. So, you know, in the same way that tomatoes will root from the stem, squash plants can do that as well. And also they can form roots at nodes along the stem. So if you leave them trailing along the ground at each one of the nodes, that node is sort of in reasonable contact with the soil that will form roots there and you get secondary root system and all, all that's great. So. Yes, in theory, you could plant them a little bit deeper, but I tend to do the opposite and lift them up a little bit. And I do that so that that stem there at ground level isn't sat in soggy soil. So we haven't had rain for a little bit, but when we do get the rain and when summer arrives properly, I'm sure we'll get plenty of rain. Um, that that stem isn't going to be sat in 
soggy soil. I mean, our soil drains well here anyway. It's stony and sandy, but nonetheless, I don't think it's a bad idea to plant squash in just a little bit of a mound. And of course, by the time I've added a bucket of compost and then excavated a suitable hole for the plant, there will be a mound of soil there. So that is what I'm going to do. Well, that was a bit silly. I did that one. I thought I was filming, but I did not have the camera switched on. So uh, I'll do another one here, exactly the same. Just a little bit of fish blood and bone. And then I've got that pile of horse compost. Now I'm not really doing too much digging here. I just want to mix that in a bit with the soil. We weeded this bed out recently, so <laughs> Not entirely thoroughly, but more or less. That's why it's not, it's not compact or anything. That's probably enough. Uh, maybe just a little bit more. I've got the seed leaves on here. I do not need those, of course, at this stage. They're not really doing anything. Um, they might as well come off. And if you've got any old manky leaves on there, they can go as well. Now I think there's going to be a lot of root. There is a lot of root. Yeah, it's pretty much like the previous one. Uh, I'd say that was a little bit too much. But it, it's not a big deal. I mean, there's lots of there's lots of new root here that will get out into that hole. Just tease those little bits out. Right. So that that's a few inches above the normal soil level there. So all I need to do is just bring that stuff round in a in a mound and. That will do nicely. Now, obviously you can use the flowers if you get them while they're nice and young, but otherwise, if you're not using them, once they've done their job and the, the fruit is set, it's not a bad idea to remove these because these will tend to get a bit soggy and when they shrivel and go yucky that will often start a bit of a rot going up the blossom end of the courgette so I think I find removing those removing those flowers when they're no longer serving any purpose helps to prevent that right All that needs is a good soak. Now these courgettes aren't, aren't dry because I'd, I'd given them water in the pots not that long ago but you can see this big old leaf looks a little bit floppy and that's so often the case with the squash that during the heat of the day they're losing a lot of moisture through these leaves or potentially losing a lot and uh, I think they lose it quicker than they can they can pull it up so sometimes they can look quite floppy in the middle of the day but if you take a look at them in the evening as the sun's passed over it's all cooled down they, the plants perk up and look a lot better so um, slightly slightly floppy leaves on a squash don't necessarily indicate a lack of water. There's a load of watering myths out there. Um, stuff that's just nonsense. So you'll sometimes read that, you know, because I've got droplets of water on these leaves that's going to cause them to score. It's just not true. Um, there are reasons to water in the day. There are reasons to water in the evening. There's, 
a lot of people say oh, you water at water at night you lose less moisture to evaporation and while that might be true your plants then tend to sit in a cooler damp environment that encourages uh, disease so uh, pros and cons to it and and quite a few myths surrounding how you should water in the garden but when i'm planting i'm i'm watering regardless of what time of day and if i see a plant that's suffering the time to water it is as soon as you see it but just to bear in mind with these big leafed fellows they can sometimes fool you so this plant has a couple of interesting features the first i don't know how well it will show up the first one is this fused fruit here you can see it's got well the, the flower of course is, is fused but it looks almost like two flowers stuck together and i've got the fruit is effectively two stuck together perfectly all right to use but just curious it happens from time to time i've also got this dodgy looking leaf and i wanted to show this uh, I remember having a question from somebody I think last year or the year before about some dodgy looking leaves on on squash and um, well this leaf certainly doesn't look very good and when I plant that I will pull that leaf off because if it isn't green it's not photosynthesizing and is therefore doing nothing useful but that leaf has been yellow from when this plant was small, that's one of the older leaves. And sometimes that happens. It, it looked really odd when this was a small seedling. It had, it had one leaf that turned mottled and yellow very early on, and, and then a couple of normal looking green leaves. And you might think when you see that, that there's a problem and the, the plant is short of nutrient of some sort and you might reach for the feed but actually it's perfectly all right it just happens like that of course it happens with older leaves as they get older then they 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 yellow and they turn useless and you pull them off because they're not helping the plant anymore and by taking those older leaves off you improve the airflow and and keep it all nice and tidy that's all great but that leaf should still be green and as I said, it turned yellow when the plant was still very young. It's just one of those things. The thing to look for is the state of the new leaves. And these new leaves are coming out fine. There's no mottling on them. They're a good deep green color. They look healthy. All of these others are fine. Just this one leaf is a bit rubbish and has been for a long time. And like I say, I will pull that one off and that is the end of that. But when you see some dodgy leaves on your squash plants when they're young, it can be a little bit misleading. But that is not a problem at all. But anyway, I've got two more to plant. I will get on with that. Then this job is done. And it will not be long at all before we take our first harvest. But that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching. and. Bye for now.